one of the funniest Siri tricks I've ever done. Tell me a story. So I don't usually do speculation type videos, but this is a topic I could not pass up talking about. Uh, Apple is allegedly updating its iPod Touch line this year. And although this product really doesn't apply to me as a consumer, I couldn't be more excited to see a refresh. I have a long history with the iPod Touch. It's a very nostalgic product for me. I had always wanted one since the age of eight. I remember I had two cousins who had older gen ones. One had a second gen and he'd always be playing Tap Tap Revenge. The other one, uh, he'd be playing Plants vs. Zombies and Doodle Jump and games like that. Oh, and the Moron Test, that game was so frustratingly fun. I finally got mine in 2010. When I turned 10, I got the fourth gen iPod, which introduced the dual cameras, which was so cool at the time. And uh, yeah, that was probably one of the best days of my life. I remember uh, coming home from school and my parents like had these boxes for my sister and I, and they made it look like they got us like chocolate or like a deck of cards. And I opened it up and I just remember just pure joy, man. It was such a great day setting it up and downloading my first couple apps. I mean, what a nostalgic product. And I think a lot of people my age can relate. I mean, all of my friends that I know owned the iPod Touch fourth generation at some point, And we all, I think, loved it to pieces. And yeah, really, ultimately, it was and still is an alternative to the iPhone. It's the cheapest iOS product you can get, and it retains the same benefits you get with an iPhone, minus the phone, the more powerful processor, the better camera, etc. But you still get the software experience with iMessage and FaceTime and all of the plethora of apps you get on a mobile, you know, pocketable device. And uh, yeah, I think a refresh would be great because back then, the iPod Touch was the number one portable gaming device. Steve Jobs had mentioned that. I think it was in the fourth gen launch, but Apple has obviously slipped in this category because they haven't refreshed their product in a while. And also Nintendo and Amazon have been uh, taking up a lot of this market, you know, with the Kindle Fire being so cheap and you can kind of aim towards kids with those huge bumper cases. You know, it's a perfect product for like a five, six, seven year old. And then you have the Nintendo Switch, which is, you know, not only a kind of a sedentary console, but you can bring it with you places. You can play, you know, titles like Smash and Mario Kart and whatever. Apple needs to make up lost ground in this. And although the iPhone and the iPad are still great gaming devices, uh, there's nothing quite like a pocketable gaming device like the iPod Touch. I mean, it was a pleasure to use in the day. I love playing a bunch of games on my iPod. I remember playing Doodle Drum, Plants vs. Zombies, uh, just all these really nostalgic titles and, you know, other ones that I've never played before because I'm not really an iOS gamer anymore, but, you know, I'm sure there are so many great games that could take advantage of a brand new iPod Touch. So as for the possible specifications, people are saying it's going to get an iPhone 10 style refresh, which I would love to see, but I don't know. I don't think it's extremely likely. It's likely, but they might stick with the home button. Who knows? I would hope that they're going to try to keep it under a $300 price tag to compete with the Switch and uh, maybe even the Kindle Fire. I mean, not really, but you know, they want to kind of maybe have a nice median because I think the iPod Touch right now is going for, I think it's like $199, maybe $249 kind of in the $200 price range. I hope they keep it there, but they are probably gonna have to increase the price if they go with an iPhone 10 style screen. As for Face ID, I don't think it's gonna be in the iPod Touch of all things. They gotta keep the price down, and that's just a feature that's gonna be exclusive with iPhone and the iPad Pro, I think. And as we know, in 2015, when the sixth gen iPod Touch came out, when they put an A8 in it and the iPhone 5S's camera in it, uh, Touch ID did not make its way into that product, probably because of price concerns even though it had been out for two years. So I doubt that Face ID is gonna make it in there. As for the processor, I'm thinking it probably could be the A11, maybe at worst the A10, at best the A12. We'll see. I mean, the A11 is still a beast of a processor and will be for the coming years. I mean, it gets insane scores on Geekbench and whatnot. Possibly two, three gigs of RAM, that'd be pretty dope. Storage, I would hope that it would begin at at least 32 gigs, preferably 64 gigs. It might be a little thicker. Uh, if it features a glass back, I think that would be a really dumb idea because A, that's more expensive, I would think. Uh, B, I don't think iPod Touch users really need wireless charging or would benefit from it. I mean, like if you're a preteen or some like little kid, I don't think that's the top thing on your list. And it just would be an unnecessary cost and an unnecessary kind of point of failure, you know, if a kid or a, you know, a young kid drops this on the ground. You know, I don't think their parents are gonna wanna replace it. So that's just me, that's what I think. It probably won't feature a headphone jack. Um, I mean, considering if it does get the iPhone 10 style refresh, that's to be expected. As for the camera, I would hope that they put something like the iPhone 7's camera in there. 
all in all, I think this is going to be kind of a Frankenstein collage of hardware. I don't know about the chassis. It could look like the previous gen iPods. It could be something newer. It could be the more industrial look that we get with the iPad Pro. Uh, it could feature glass. It could feature wireless charging. All I'm going to say is I wouldn't expect too much. I might even expect a home button uh, in Apple's attempt to kind of keep this product's price down and to make it more marketable towards like younger people or people who just don't want to spend a ton of money to get an entry level iOS device. And looping back into why this product would be great in the portable gaming market, uh, I also think that Android users say you're kind of tech savvy like I am and you were kind of primarily using an Android phone. An iPod Touch might be the best alternative to buying an iPhone if you want to kind of be cross-platform, you know, instead of having to buy, you know, an iPhone 10 and having like the latest like Samsung phone, maybe like a Note 9 or whatever, you, you wouldn't have to kind of choose, I guess you could kind of have the iPod Touch as your secondary device, but also have, you know, iMessage on there or whatever. Kind of the perfect alternative for somebody who doesn't want an iPhone, but doesn't want an iPad. And that's why I think the iPod Touch is still a great product and has a place once again in the 2019 market. So yeah, that's just my thoughts. I really didn't script this. I kind of just went off and had a couple talking points. Hopefully this makes some sense. I do think the iPod Touch still has a place in the 2019 market, specifically in the portable gaming realm. Uh, it should compete with the Nintendo Switch and other portable gaming devices. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like in the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. And if you haven't clicked the bell icon, I would really appreciate it if you did. That would help me out a lot. And uh, yeah, other than that, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.